Okay, that's what that's why I've written it here. I've said that the function can take any real number, so it should be able to take any one of these. Okay, and what it does is it maps them across into real numbers. Okay, so it maps them across into real numbers. Okay, now let's think about where this is going to map to. Let's see, can we break it? Okay, so when I pass in one, okay, into the function, I'm going to evaluate f of one. Well, f of one is equal to one over one. Okay, that's the x becomes the one, which is equal to one. <coughs> so the value one is taken across. To the value one, okay. Uh, what about minus one? Well, f of minus one, okay, is equal to one over minus one, which is equal to minus one. So the value minus one is taken to into the value minus one. What about the square root of two? Well, f of the square root of two is taken across into one over the square root of two, okay. So the square root of two is mapped across to to one to one one over the square root of two. And what about pi? Well, the value pi, f of pi, okay, is mapped into, is equal to one over pi, okay? So that's mapped in across here to some number, which is one divided by, one divided by pi. What about zero? Well, let's think about it. f of zero, okay, f of zero is equal to one over zero. And that's, as a number, is undefined. Okay, it's an undefined number for our purposes here. Okay, so uh, you can actually see that when we pass zero into this particular function, okay, it doesn't go across anywhere. Okay, it doesn't go across here. Okay, it doesn't end up in this particular set over here. So actually, this function is not well defined. Okay, this function we have a particular problem. Yeah, because not every value in R. Okay, not every value in R is mapped across here, and we know from our definition of a function. Okay, from our definition of a function, we must have when we define the domain that for all values in this domain that we define, every value f of a f of f of the value must exist, and f of zero doesn't exist. It's undefined. So how can I fix this? I could redefine the function, okay? I could redefine the function to be the, the real numbers excluding, excluding zero, okay? So actually I could redefine this function to be the function f is, takes the real numbers excluding zero, okay? Into the real numbers, okay? If that makes sense. So this function now takes values, okay, from the real numbers, but doesn't have zero in this set. So this is the domain. This is the domain of the function. This is the domain of the function, if that makes sense, okay? So this is the domain, okay? This set here, or, is the codomain. This is the codomain, okay? It's a set of all possible values, okay? But let's just extend it a little bit. Let's just consider the values that are actually mapped into now, okay? Let's consider over here, okay? Now, I suppose my question is this, okay? Is it possible now, is it possible, okay, for us to have a value that's mapped into one, some value x, which goes to one over x, is it possible for this particular value here, okay, to be equal to zero, okay? okay. okay. Let's just consider this, okay? So, is it possible for it to be equal to zero, okay? It's actually not possible, yeah, okay? Because, let's just say, let, let f of x equals zero, okay? Well, what does that mean? Well, then therefore we have one over x is equal to zero, okay? And from this particular fact, we end up with that one is equal to zero. One is equal to zero, which is not true, okay? So you can actually see that this, albeit that this particular set here of all these values, yeah, excluding zero, all of them are definitely mapped into the reals, but there's a number in the reals that ain't mapped into, actually, and it's zero. F of x can never be equal to zero. So actually, the, so in this particular sense, the range, the range of this function, okay, in this particular instance here, the range, where's my red pen, okay? The range of this function, albeit the, albeit the codomain is the reals, the range of the function is actually the reals exclusive of zero, okay? Okay, if that makes sense. So really what we have here is that the domain, every value in the domain, for our function to be well-defined, every value in our domain must be mapped across. We found a value with respect to this function in the domain that wasn't mapped across, it was zero. So what we did was we excluded it, which gives us now a valid domain. So actually, now what we have is we have our blue circle here, okay? Uh, this value out here is possibly the value zero, okay? But we've excluded it. But the blue circle now, which is or less zero, or without the value zero, okay, uh, contains all the values that are mapped across, okay? The codomain, okay, is all is is a set where all of the values go into. 
And one possible set where all the values do go into is they go into the real numbers, okay? Uh, but the actual set of values that were taken into, okay, we know is is the real numbers without the value zero. So that actually this set here is what's known as the range. It's the real numbers without zero, okay? And this value out here is possibly a zero, if that makes sense. Uh, that was quite a, I suppose, a challenging example, okay? Uh, uh, but I think it's a nice example that allows us to exemplify, okay, what we really mean by when we define the domain and when we define the codomain and when we define the range and so on and so, and so forth with respect, with respect to, with respect to functions. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, uh, and I hope that this video uh, dealing with functions and, in, in particular, uh, attempting to define what we mean by the domain, the codomain, range, and image of a function. I hope that this was uh, in some way intuitive, and more importantly, I hope that was actually helpful, helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye.